Hello crafting lovelies, it is Laura and I have my 10 cards one kit featuring the February Love From Lizzie card kit for you here. I know it's later than usual, I do apologise, but hopefully you'll still get some inspiration and you'll be able to figure out what you want to make with your kit. And the good news is, with this being so late, next month's kit is going to be released in just a couple days, which is really exciting. Okay, so this first card, I've just talked completely over my ink blending, but that's what I did there. I ink blended with some Distress Oxide in antique linen, and then I took a background stamp from my stash and stamped that down using that same embossing, uh, that same Distress Oxide ink, and it just creates a really nice neutral background. And then I have this sticker here, and I've just stuck it down to a piece of copy paper, and that's just to make it easier to run it through my paper trimmer so I can cut it down to the exact size that I want. And then I'll go ahead and attach it all with some glue. So here I'm going to mat everything with some black cardstock and it'll just leave a nice edge around each of the pieces. You could of course substitute this matting for some black peel-offs and it would definitely give a similar effect. But for this one I decided to go ahead and mat these stickers up and I just think they're so sweet. This lovely like 1920s vintage feel. Um, the ladies with the hats on this uh, sticker strip here I think are just stunning and I think it pairs beautifully with this kind of clutch bag. I actually have a bag that's a little bit like this from a 1920s kind of fancy dress outfit that I had for a couple years ago and um, my brother had actually bought me it as a generic like everyday handbag and I was like mm, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to use this and then this 1920s party came up so I was like perfect I will use it for that. Anyway I wanted to go ahead and add some of this feather material to this lady's hat on the left hand side. I just think it works really well to give that kind of 3D texture and dimension to this piece so I just pulled off a couple of strands I guess, um, of this feather material and just press that down into a dot of glue and then made sure to leave it to one side while that dried. And I just think it works really well. It gives that kind of extra like interactive kind of element to this piece. So while that dries, I'll work on the card base. I'm using a white card base and I did actually bring in a couple of extra card bases this month. I was in a bit of a kind of layering and matting kind of a mood. So the cardstock that came with the kit, usually I cut it in half and then fold it in half so I can have A2 size cards. But this month I decided to cut it into four for the most part so I could have um, kind of panels to work with. So I'll go ahead and stick everything down. I'm again keeping the consistency with those black layers. So I have that black layer on top of my white card base, then the Distress Oxide ink blended background and background stamp. Then I'll add this little sticker piece which I've given the matting to. And then for the final element, I will go ahead and add this handbag with some foam dots. These are the Scrapbook Adhesive Foam Squares. They are my favourite foam squares to use. And I will try and include links to everything in the description below. And then for this sentiment, I think with the ladies across the card and the handbag, this girls' night out works perfectly. So I didn't want to mess anything up at this point, so I did bring in my Misty just to make sure I got perfect stamping. And I went ahead and stamped that twice just to kind of intensify it and help it to really pop off that background. So that is card one finished. I'll go ahead and show you a close up. Okay, moving on to card two, I decided to tackle my nemesis, loose glitter. So I grabbed these feathers and I'm just laying down a generous amount of glue. I was probably a little bit too generous if I'm honest. There only needs to be enough there for it to be a sticky tacky surface but I got a little bit carried away um, so you could definitely use less than I did here. And I'm just using my finger to spread that around and get really nice good solid coverage. And I'll do the same thing to the second feather. And I'm just kind of cleaning my hand on a baby wipe off to the side there because I didn't want to end up kind of a hot sticky mess. 
for the rest of these cards and have everything sticking to my hands and not the pages. Once I was happy with the amount of coverage that I had on those feathers, I took a deep breath because you can't breathe around loose glitter, it ends up everywhere. And then I generously poured the glitter over the top of the feathers. At first I was trying to kind of make sure I didn't get too much out and then I thought, I'm just gonna have to go for it. Just shake it all out, end up with glitter all over the place. I am working on a piece of scrap paper just to try and contain everything. Um, no doubt I'll be finding this glitter on my face or in my hair at some point because I don't know how it happens but it always ends up on my face, in my hair and on my dog. How and ever. To help everything stick I just folded over the paper and applied some pressure and then I'll use my tweezers to pull out each of those pieces and try to get any of the excess off and then I'll set it onto another piece of scrap paper to dry and as I say hopefully this helps to contain the majority of that glitter. So while I leave that to dry I'm going to work on the background for this card and I've got some Salmon Says Stamp ink here and this beautiful feather from the stamp set. I just think it's stunning. I really love kind of the curve to it. Um, that's probably a really weird thing to say, but I think that's my favorite thing about this stamp is kind of the, the shape to it and the movement that it provides on the back of a card or wherever you stamp it down. So I went ahead and covered this card panel, making sure to have little bits kind of poking off the edges and the sides so it looks really organic and like a larger piece of pattern paper that's been trimmed down. And then I also stamped the frame from the stamp set and the with love and trimmed it out and that's just up there in the right hand corner. And then I'm grabbing my adhesive again and sticking one of those feathers flat to the card and then I've got some more pop dots, this time I'm using the white ones because my card is paler so they kind of disguise a little bit better behind this piece and just adding those to the top and a little bit of adhesive to help that stick down so you've got that 3D dimensional layered look and then I'm using foam dots to stick down the with love sentiment inside of the frame. And here's a close up of card two. Okay so card three and four are kind of a two for one deal. So I grabbed some of the 12 by 12 patterned paper and trimmed out some of the diamond shapes and I also cut some squares or I guess diamonds if you turn them on the side from the patterned paper. Because the patterned paper is six by six if you go ahead and trim two inches off the side you still have a four inch piece which will work nicely on a card panel and then you can cut that three times to get your two by two squares which is what I did with those three patterns that you see in the top right hand corner and then all of the other ones came from my 12 by 12 sheet. You definitely could just use the 12 by 12 sheet as it came, however I wanted to be able to customise the pattern and to make sure that the only imagery and sentiments were the ones that I chose to have on my card and it's actually quite therapeutic to go ahead and build this up. So once I had everything in place I just used my long scissors to trim off any of the excess. You could definitely use your paper trimmer or whatever you have to hand and I realized that I had enough of these squares to make a second card so as I say this is kind of a kind of a two for one deal I went for a similar design but different um, sentiments and different images for the focal point on each of these so I knew I wanted to use the telephone and the lady and for the lady I went with the fashionista sentiment and for the telephone I went for daub I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not gonna lie, I had to look up what it meant because it was new to me. I hadn't heard of it before, but apparently it was 1920s kind of slang, I guess, um, for something that was really great. So there we go. <laughs> I felt like that paired with the telephone image. So I stuck each of those down flat to my card and then outlined them with the peel-offs. These peel-offs are such a stunning colour, they pair so beautifully with the pattern papers and I know I say that a lot, I probably say it every month to be fair, but they really do, they look so beautiful, especially with that kind of mirror finish. 
So I worked my way around each of the edges, just using my craft knife to gently press into the peel-offs to cut them where I wanted to, and then I just finished off each of those corners with a nice point. So there we have it, cards three and four. And I really love it when you can get kind of a two for one deal on your cards. Okay, so card five, I have one of these panels. This is one of those panels that is four inches wide and I decided not to trim the length any shorter than the card. So actually the card panel base will just poke out of the left and the right hand sides as you can see on the screen. So this peacock pattern paper was perfect for my feather, so I grabbed the larger feather, not the one that I kind of ripped some of the ends off in card one, and I'm adding some adhesive just to kind of the spine along the back, and then I'll press that in place and just leave that to dry. Then from one of the 12 by 12 pattern pieces, I have this beautiful little peacock panel and I added some foam squares onto the back and stuck him over the feather. Next, I'll grab one of my white card bases. As I mentioned, I did bring in a couple of extra card bases this for this month's kit. You definitely don't need to, but I wanted to have more of that cardstock for my layering and matting. So I'll go ahead and stick everything down and then it just needs a little bit of embellishment I have here my Nouveau Drops and I'm just adding those to the plume, I'm going to go with plume, and I'm adding some of these gems to the background of the card and also to that little peacock topper piece. So to help with my positioning of those gems I'm just picking them up with my craft knife and then pressing them down onto the card and that is this card finished. Okay, so now I wanted to get into some ink blending. This is going to look a little bit strange, but stick with me. I decided to blend some kind of peacock colours across this background. So I have Cracked Pistachio, Peacock Feathers, Mermaid Lagoon, and Print Sketch. And these are all Distress Oxides, and they blend on so beautifully just using an ink blending tool. And I work from one colour to another, so kind of I went lightest to darkest here, and then I'll go back in reverse just to blend the areas where each of those colours meet. And I'm just working on a laminated piece of cardstock so it's really easy to wipe clean and I don't end up with ink all over my work surface. So I waited until that was completely dry, I actually helped it along a little bit with my heat tool and then I prepped the background with anti-static powder tool and stamped the beautiful peacock image and then added some clear embossing powder. So this is where I'm saying stick with me, it's a little strange. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to add a whole bunch of colour to this image and the easiest way to do that is to create a coloured background or you could grab a piece of colourful cardstock and stamp with clear embossing, uh, clear embossing ink and then use clear embossing powder over the top, essentially sealing in all of that colour in the background. So now I want to make all of that colour disappear apart from where my embossing powder is, so I grabbed some more of my Distress Oxide and just layered up this grey colour until I was satisfied with the opacity and kind of made all of that colour disappear. When it was completely dry I grabbed a dry cloth and just buffed away any of that Distress Oxide that's sitting on top of my set embossing powder. Because it's kind of a plasticky material the ink won't dry on there and you can go ahead and rub it away and it will leave behind this beautiful ink blended peacock. To make this peacock into the focal element on my card, I grabbed an oval die and I'm just being careful to line that up exactly where I want it and then hold it in place with a piece of washi tape, making sure to hang the washi tape over to the left hand side just in case it rips as I um, peel it away after running through my die cut machine. So here I have a piece of the specialty card, this has got a really nice pearlized finish and it pairs really nicely with the greys in the background of this piece and really allows that peacock to shine. So I stuck that down onto my card panel and then layered the oval on top, 
just being careful to press that down um, just where the peacock is. I was conscious that perhaps some of that ink may have still been slightly wet. Distress Oxide does take a long time to dry and I added a few layers but it worked perfectly and I finished it off with the sentiment just because. Okay, for card seven, I'm keeping things simple with this beautiful patterned paper. I wanted this to kind of be the main focal point, so I went ahead and added some tape runner onto the back of this piece, and it's been cut down to be the same size as my card base, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. It will completely cover this white note card, and then I'm adding in some of the sticker pieces. So I wanted to use this lady here who is cut into a banner shape along with the sentiment the bee's knees and I also wanted to use this border sticker that has the same pattern in the background as this patterned paper so they naturally pair perfectly. And I'm using my grid mat here just to help me line everything up with all those stickers kind of hanging off my fingers. I did eventually set those down and I was trying to figure out how I wanted to layer this up. I knew I wanted to use this frame sticker and I couldn't decide if I wanted the lady on there or the sentiment and I decided to go with the sentiment. I did trim down the sentiment sticker ever so slightly because after I'd stuck down this frame I realised that it was maybe just a little bit too big and it covered up too much of that background piece so I just grabbed my scissors and trimmed off some of the excess and then it fit just perfectly inside there like it was meant to be. And then for my banner, I wanted to add a little bit of dimension, so I grabbed my anti-static powder tool and just prepped the surface with anti-static powder, essentially eliminating the sticky residue on the background, and then I covered this in foam squares and stuck it down with that extra dimension, and then trimmed off the extra of the sticker, and that is this card finished. So easy to recreate, but I think it looks really effective. Oh, we're not finished. I added peel-offs. Of course I added peel-offs. <laughs> so it just finishes off that border edge there with those super shiny mirror peel-offs. So moving into cards eight and nine, I decided to work again in kind of a two-for-one situation, but these cards will look very different. The reason I'm calling these kind of a two for one is because it's a similar approach of using one of the cut parts, a layering piece, a background piece, and some of the ribbon. I actually don't end up using the ribbon on this card, but I did think that I was going to. So I used my ATG to add some uh, double-sided sticky tape onto the back of this piece, and then I've cut down a panel of that flu specialty to be ever so slightly larger than this background piece, so it leaves a tiny border around the outside edge. And then I'm grabbing this sentiment. I love this sentiment. I have never faked a sarcasm in my life. I think it's a super sassy sentiment. It's from So Suzy Stamps, and I think it just pairs perfectly with this image of the ladies together. They look like they could be having a sassy conversation, so this sentiment works perfectly, in my opinion. That one lady with her hands kind of up around in her hair, she looks sassy to me. So there we go. I felt like that sentiment worked. So I again added double sided sticky tape and stuck that down and then just trimmed off the overhang that was hanging over the top there. The sentiment was slightly larger than I thought so I did have to trim that down but I think it looks great. So now I'll just add some tape to my card panel and then I have that same border that is around the cut apart piece around the outside edge of my card as well. Again, just to finish this off, I'll bring in those gems and use my craft knife to pick those up and place them down in each of the corners. It's such a simple card, but I really do think with the cut apart pieces and adding that extra dimension with the layers and the amusing sentiment, it turns out be to be a really great card. Okay, so for the other version of this design, I'm using a different colour palette and this time the sentiment will be on the inside of the card. So here I'm going to go ahead and line this up on my cream base, which again is slightly larger than my cut apart piece, and then I'll layer that onto my background panel. But before I do that, I'm adding some double sided tape into the corners and I'm bringing in some of that ribbon. So I kind of fussed with this for a couple minutes. I don't know why I was finding it 
so difficult um, but all I'm doing is wrapping some of the tape around the corner of the card and pressing it into that double-sided sticky tape so I've just got a nice little kind of finishing edge in two of the corners. Once I'm happy with that I'll grab my cut apart panel and add some more double-sided sticky tape and stick that down in the center kind of finishing off that panel piece as you can see there isn't much room for a sentiment and I wanted to use another sassy sentiment. <laughs> this is another one of my So Suzy sentiments and I'll use that on the inside of the card because it's quite large and there isn't too much room left for a sentiment on the front anyway. I'm using a generous amount of double sided tape on the back of this piece because of that ribbon just to make sure it holds really nicely and then I'll mount everything up in my Misty and stamp I hate you the least. <laughs> I've actually used that sentiment on a Valentine's card for Darren in previous years and um, yeah, I really like it. To finish off these pieces, I'm adding some of the sequins. You can see I've already done the card on the right there and then I just went ahead and used little dots of glue and stuck the sequins into those just to add some more interest onto the background. <laughs> I really love these sentiments, they, um, yeah, the sassiness of them really amuses me. For that card that was made on the blue specialty, I will go ahead and add a white liner on the inside so it's a little bit easier to write a message when I come to use this card. Okay, the final card. Again, I am going to use another one of the cut apart pieces and I'm using this black specialty cardstock and I knew that I wanted to use the center um, to go ahead and mat the cut apart piece. So I grabbed my ruler and just trimmed out the inside and then I can go ahead and add some tape onto the back of this piece. This is only ever so slightly larger than my background, so a tiny little piece of it will poke out when I have it sat on my card and you'll see what I mean in just a second. So I went ahead and added it onto the card base and I don't know how this happened, but somehow they ended up different sizes, so some of that white card base was poking out of the edges. I went ahead and trimmed that off and then grabbed some fun foam and added double sided tape onto the back of this. It's a really nice inexpensive way to add even dimension on the background of your cards. And so I'll place that down and then grab my patterned paper which I've cut down to size and again just add some more tape onto the background and lay that over the top of the foam for that nice even dimension. So you can't really see from the angle that I'm filming at, but there is just a little bit of that specialty cardstock poking around the edges and it looks really nice in person. So next I grabbed my cut apart piece and layered it up onto that black specialty. I went ahead and evened out the edges on my paper trimmer because as you'll remember, we just cut that with a craft knife. So the edges weren't perfect. And then I'll stick this piece down. I love the sentiment. I think it looks great. And that pop of color against the kind of more muted background. I love it. So, Deco Mesh. This is an interesting product if you haven't worked with it before. I decided to use it to create a bow. So I neatened up the edges just with my scissors. And then I folded it in, folded it in half, making sure to overlap those edges ever so slightly. And then once I was happy with the positioning, I kind of bunched the center together to make a bow. And then I realized I didn't have what I needed, so I quickly went and grabbed a cable tie, wrapped it around the center where my fingers were, and just pulled that tight. You could definitely use some string or something else to secure it in place, but the cable tie provides instant hold, and it's nice and sturdy, and it's easy to work with, and I just think it pairs perfectly with this kind of deco mesh. So I trimmed off the excess of that cable tie and then to make it look just a little bit prettier on the background I grabbed that thin black ribbon and just wrapped it over where the cable tie was to cover it up. You definitely don't need to do this because it's black on black, it works, but if you were using like a white cable tie then this is a great way to have everything match and coordinate and not kind of look so strange <laughs> and have people wonder why there's a cable tie on the middle of your card. 
if you do this then don't do what I did and leave your edges really short and make it difficult to tie a bow. Learn from my mistakes but I've, once I had that bow tied um, to make sure that that string wouldn't go anywhere or ribbon wouldn't go anywhere I trimmed away the excess and added some glue to stick this down. I did have to hold this in place for quite a while, you could definitely use hot glue to get that kind of instant hold, but it has dried and it holds perfectly. Okay, so now it's time to recap all 10 cards. I'll bring each of the cards on screen for you to have another look at. And as I do that, I'm just gonna let you know a little bit more about how the kit subscription service works. You can definitely buy these kits as a one-off. They're released on the 19th of the month and they do sell out very quickly. So if you are interested, then set an alarm on your phone for the 19th of the month and remember to go and check out the Love From Lizzie website to see what this month's kit is and whether or not it's something that you want to purchase. There are of course the sneak peeks available on the Love From Lizzie Instagram uh, feed from the 12th of the month so you can get an idea what's coming and whether or not you like it. And if you do wish to sign up to the subscription service, there are links in the description below. And just remember that when you see that initial price, you are paying for two kits up front and two lots of shipping. So each month you can expect to pay half of that rather than that full amount every single month. So you can get an idea of the pricing. If you have any questions at all, then go ahead and leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to let me know which of these cards is your favourite and if you're new here go ahead and tap on the logo on screen right now to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you're watching on Lizzie's channel you can head over to Crafty Not Shifty for more from me and if you're watching on my channel you can head over to Lizzie's for additional cards from the rest of the design team. That's all from me today, I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now!